understanding is not the same as agreeing. And I see people mix that up all the time and that happens. And I think this kind of gets to sometimes resolutions aren't going to be that someone changes. It's just understanding that you are two separate people with two separate belief systems. And while you may share a lot of values, you may share a lot of mutual goals and your lives may be intricately intertwined. It doesn't mean that you're going to agree on everything. And so sometimes a really, I think a winning resolution is I understand your perspective and you understand mine and we're agreeing to disagree on this. You're listening to episode 221 of the Building Psychological Strength podcast, where we uncover the information, tools, and techniques to turn our mind into our most valuable asset. The courage to face fears with persistence. Being able to be present enough in this moment to choose my response thoughtfully. We have the strength to bend to life stressors, to bend to adversity without snapping, without breaking. There are only six things that contribute to our quality of life, and they are all experiences. In every moment, we are deciding who we want to be and how we want to live our lives. Noticing what your brain is doing and then being able to make choices. Mobilize the things that we know lift us up. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Building Psychological Strength podcast. My name is April and I'm your host. It is getting close to that time of year, Valentine's Day. And I'm going to say that and some people are going to be like, woohoo, I love Valentine's Day. This is great. And other people are going to be like, Blech, I can't stand this holiday. This is horrible. So I realized that I'm kicking this episode off with a little bit of a uh, polarizing topic. But the reason why I talk about that a bit is sometimes these holidays can be a really good marker in the year for us to focus on different aspects of our lives. And the obvious one that Valentine's Day brings up is our relationships. Now, in this episode, we're going to be focusing on a topic that comes up frequently in close relationships. And this might be, I mean, you can think about this in terms of your close romantic relationships, a la Valentine's Day. But you can also think about this in terms of other relationships in your life with good friends, with family members, with coworkers. Specifically, the topic that we're going to be talking about today is how we handle arguments and how we handle um, issues within those close relationships. And I'm super pumped because Ashley is here with me today and we are going to chat through that topic. I am excited to talk about this topic because it is such an important one. It absolutely is. And you know, it makes me think, um, so I, for those who may or may not know, uh, I'm married. I've been married for oh God, a little over seven <laughs> years now. <laughs> Be a better wife. Know how long you've been married. I'm just kidding. I was trying to remember uh, when that was the coldest I have ever been in my life. Yeah, we got married Your in December <laughs> in Minnesota and it was rugged. I mean, people mm-hmm. were troopers, but it was rugged. I mean, we got like I don't know, seven inches of snow, and then it dropped down to be below zero. So it was like all of winter in about 24 hours. Everybody got mm-hmm. a good, nice exposure. Anyway, so I've been married for about seven years. We were dating for several years before that. So I've got about a decade into this relationship. And I I am happy to say it's an extremely strong relationship. And we've had a number of conversations um, with other folks who've said, hey, you know, what do you guys feel like is a secret to your success? And it's funny because our relationship is one that has really strengthened over the years. And it's due to, in part, but in significant part, to what we're going to be talking about today. And it's funny because when people say, oh, what, what's your, the secret to success in a marriage? And most people will say, oh, don't sm- sweat the small stuff. And you don't have to argue over everything and whatever. And my advice and what we did is actually kind of opposite from that. We had every argument. We, quote unquote, fought every fight. We had all the discussions. We didn't just leave them alone. We had the discussions and the argument to the point that they felt like things were resolved. And 
I say that and it may sound horrible. <laughs> that just may sound like <laughs> awful. Like, wow, can't wait to live with you guys. That sounds great. But really, that's what sparked today's podcast episode because the way that we approached those arguments was a little bit unique. And I would argue made them effective in helping to strengthen our relationship. Mm -hmm. And specifically, uh, we approached those arguments from the standpoint of wanting to get to an understanding as, as the resolution, not to get to a point where one of us was going to win and the other person was going to somehow come over to their side. Mm -hmm. And that's an important distinction, I think. It's huge. And, and okay. So nerd alert for just a second, but there are two, uh, internationally renowned psychologists, John and Julie Gottman, and they had, they founded the Gottman Institute. These are the gurus of romantic partner relationships. So the, like the ultimate couples researchers, and I follow their work because they're super solid where I'm going with this though, is that they're really big on saying there is conflict within every relationship. Now they're talking about, uh, romantic intimate partners, but there's conflict in every relationship. And there's even repeated conflict where the same sticking point can come up repeatedly. That's not a bad thing. It's not an unhealthy thing, but it's all about how you approach the conflict. So I love today's topic, Julie, talk about how to, how to do this and, and how to have productive, healthy arguments with people, whether it's your partner or friends, family, coworkers, because it's so incredibly important and it's unavoidable. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. People try, right? Like I have this, I've already had this conversation twice this week in my practice of, is this a situation to let it go? Or is this a conversation that needs to be had? Cause sometimes people, I'm going to put this in air quotes, let it go. This is what I think, you know, when you hear the don't sweat the small stuff, but they're not really letting it go. They're just no. not addressing it and then stewing on it on the inside. Having a conversation then, in their brain with the person yes. instead of the person. Yep. Yeah. Guilty. And then the next also time in, have done that. Oh, Guilty. Uh, yeah. I'm wearing my hypocrite hat right now for sure. But that's, it's interesting to me because that's not the same as letting it go or they address things and do it in a really ineffective way. So I love this topic of how to, how to really approach arguments in a yeah. healthy way. And we titled this episode, how to win every argument, because ultimately win quote unquote means you get to a good resolution where you can both walk away and feel satisfied, not yes. victorious necessarily, but satisfied. And there's well, one, oh, go for it. Oh, I was just saying that that's the biggest point here is redefining what it means to win the argument. We'll mm. come back. Keep going. Yeah. There's one caveat that I want to make before we get really rolling on this episode, because you can tell that we're excited to talk about this topic, but there are certain relationships that are, we'll call it in scope for today's episode. And there are relationships that are out of scope. Relationships that are out of scope for this episode are ones that are not, I would say, healthy relationships. If it's manipulative, if it's abusive, if there's anything like that going on, this does not apply. Mm -hmm. However, if you're, and, and this is going to be your judgment call, you know, you are the CEO of your life. You're going to have to make this judgment call. You know, your relationships better than obviously we do. But if, what we're talking about here are relationships where you can you can fairly safely assume positive intent from the other person. And here's what I mean by that. The other person might be angry. I mean, they may be super pissed sure. at you. Totally fine. Uh, potentially still in scope. Mm -hmm. But if you can jump into a conversation with the other person, firmly believing that prior to talking to you, they were not sitting around going, oh man, I'm really going to stick it to Ashley today. How can I make <laughs> her as feel as horrible as possible? I'm going to try to make her feel as small as possible. My mm -hmm. intent in this conversation is to do damage mm -hmm. and end up in a position where I'm really hurting the other person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the case. And those are not the relationships we're talking about. We're talking about the ones where you can assume positive intent. That other person is coming from a good place, albeit it might not be a comfy conversation right. we're going to have. Right. And some of that might change like when anger kicks in. And I think honestly, when it comes to, to arguments, 
I think, I think a lot of times anger is the culprit here because, you know, strong emotions literally change the way we think you have different thoughts when you're really angry than you do when you are calm and collected. So for this scope, we're talking about the calm and collected. This person has your best interest and the relationship's best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. Now but in the even, moment, mm -hmm. can we talk about that angry part though? Let's not go yeah. off of that because inevitably or not inevitably, but a lot of times anger does come up in these arguments. So can mm -hmm. you just elaborate for a second? And I think we're probably going to hit it again later as well. The yeah. changes that anger causes in the way that we think. Yeah. So let me start super quick. Emotions are just data. Emotions are our brain shortcut for giving us a lot of information very, very quickly. Anxiety means danger. Sadness means I lost something I cared about. Anger means something's blocking me from getting what I want or I don't like what someone is doing. Mm. Now think about the situations where you're going to have an argument. Don't those apply? So anger is pretty natural, right? But what happens when we get flooded with really strong emotions? So, I mean, if you think about anger, it can range anything from like a mild annoyance to enraged, right? All kind of in that angry spectrum. The matter you get, the more of it, it's going to impact your thinking. And what happens when we're in a negative emotional state, our thinking gets very narrow and very negative. So we really like hone in on what we're perceiving as the threat or the issue. Mm -hmm. So we're not thinking broadly. We're not thinking in this case of arguments, we're not necessarily at our best perspective taking mm -hmm. point. And that's a problem, right? If you aren't aware of that and don't work to counteract it. Makes total sense. Mm -hmm. That makes total sense. So I love this. I love this topic as uh, one that is an inevitability that will impact a lot of relationships in people's lives. So let's uh, dive in here a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Ashley, before we jumped on to record, you said something really cool about, um, you know, a lot of times we think about arguments as a way, man, I just, I need to get that other person to see it my way. And mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we are right. But you said something really profound about is your goal to be right or is your goal to be happy, right? Mm. So this was way back when I first started blogging. This was actually one of my very first blog posts was I called it the blame game, but I wrote it in response to politics. And there was, I forget what issue had happened, but there was a whole lot of finger pointing and blaming going on. Now, if you've listened to us before, you hear us talk about the committee in your mind, um, the, the blamer is one of those, right? That that's the, it's not my fault. It's all this other person's fault. So it's that tendency to pick out blame, point the finger towards someone else. And we do that a lot when we're angry. So I was seeing all of this going on where there was an issue coming up. We needed a, we needed a real solution and everybody was distracted by emotions and pointing fingers at the other side. And then I started to realize this happens in our relationships too. I mean, honestly, I noticed it this week in my own mind, as I was just stressed about unrelated things and see this like blame kind of kicking in. So I started to think about it and I have yet to see anything good come out of that blame game. When you start to go down the path of you're wrong, here's what you did, I'm right, here's why, and we're placing blame and defending ourselves, no one wins. It's mm -hmm. like that, do you remember like at the, we had a state fair growing up and you know, there would be that game with a little like goldfish in the bowls and you threw the, the ping pong ball into yeah. it, but like the balls don't really fit in the hole. So it's a rigged game, no one wins. And that's what I think happens when we're approaching arguments from this right, wrong perspective, because then there has to be a winner and a loser. Mm -hmm. And we get locked into that. And all of a sudden we're distracted by the real issue at hand, which is why I think redefining winning as a, a, an effective resolution and honestly mm -hmm. a values-based resolution. Like what good does it do my relationship if I win? Quote unquote, yeah. right? Like I kind of think about, you know, um, my kitchen is a mess right now. And if I were to go argue with my partner and say, you know, I told you I was super busy this week. I need you to do the dishes. And he would say, but typically that's something that I usually handle. Like we could get into this. He should, he said, she said stuff. Well, you said you were going to do this. Or you should have done that. And at that point we could get really heated, but who's doing the dishes. 
no one's doing the dishes. So it's not actually going anywhere productive. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like the point about, um, we've made it a couple of times, but to elaborate on it a little bit, the redefining what a successful argument is by reaching Mm -hmm. resolution. Resolution doesn't mean vindication. It doesn't mean victory. It means that both people can walk away from the conversation feeling quote unquote satisfied, not feeling like they won or victorious, but satisfied. And by that, I mean, you know, Ashley mentioned earlier the committee in your mind and how sometimes you quote unquote, let it go, but then you spend the next two hours hashing a fake argument out in your mind Mm -hmm. as though that, you know, it's productive (laughs) time that you're spending. Mm -hmm. Um, To me, walking away from an argument satisfied means that that doesn't happen. My mind doesn't feel the need to go back and rehash in that same noisy way as if, uh, as if I hadn't had the argument in the first place. And that going back to this anecdote that I started the episode with, I think that's why over time we've gotten to the point between Jeremy, my husband and I, where it's developed this level of intimate understanding between the two of us, because Mm -hmm. we've gotten to that resolution, that satiation of the argument by, and this is kind of getting into the second point that we want to talk about, by arguing in order to understand each other, Mm -hmm. not arguing in order to win or or get the other person to see my side. Over time, the more times that we've had quote unquote arguments where both of us came in with the absolute goal and PS, sometimes this took one of us, whoever was of soundest mind, because again, Mm -hmm. you get angry, whoever was less on tilt to use a a (laughs) poker term, but whoever was less emotional at the time would sometimes say, can we both agree right now that we're coming to this argument with the goal of understanding? And sometimes the answer was no. And we're like, table it. I'll be back in a second, in a little bit. I, but like, I love that. Mm-hmm. Reground on what the goal is. But mm-hmm. the more we did that, the more I understood his point of view, even though in certain circumstances, it is vastly different from mine. If we would have done that, had those arguments for the sake of quote unquote winning, He would Mm -hmm. have never won and I would have never won. Mm -hmm. But now I get where he's coming from. I get the deeper why. I get the motivation. I get the emotion. I understand the um, maybe historical context of why that's important to him. Mm -hmm. I get what the implications are. And even though I don't agree with him and that's not how I think. And if I were in this alone, I would super not do it that way. Mm -hmm. I get why it's important. Yeah. And that's been huge. Well, and I think that, you know, so if we kind of think you, right, you can either win or you can be happy, but you can't really do both. Right. Right. You're happier with this sense of understanding, right. And this intimacy that comes from really getting your partner. And I think that gets to this point about listening in an argument. A lot of times we get fired up. We want to win, or even, I guess I even kind of coming into it of like, fine, cool. I'm not going to try to win. I'm going to try to stay focused on the big picture here, which side note, guys, we're talking about tapping into your values. Mm -hmm. What are your values? Domination. I don't hear that one very often from people loving, caring, supportive relationships. I hear that one all the time. So tapping into your values can help. But with this, I want to, I want to talk about, you know, how do you listen And if you're being real with yourself, when you're in an argument or a heated discussion with someone, are you listening to understand or are you listening to respond? Mm -hmm. You're already jumping ahead a little bit, getting ready to like shoot them down or have a rebuttal at the ready. That's not the most effective or constructive way to approach this. We have to understand. So I challenge you, listen with the goal of understanding where the other person is coming from, understanding their point of view, then you respond. Mm -hmm. That's a fundamentally different quality of listening. And that means that in 
it, it takes a little bit of emotional intelligence, regulation, mm -hmm. awareness, but that means that in the heat of that moment, in, in largely, especially in the beginning mm -hmm. of a discussion, you're largely going to be asking a question when you want to make a statement. Mm -hmm. You want to state something back, state your mm -hmm. point, when in reality, tell me why that's important to you. You, uh -huh. It seems like you're really, uh, that really brings up a lot of emotion. Can you tell me why? Or yeah. has something in that way hurt you in the past, either in mm -hmm. our relationship or in others? Um, understanding that why word is really mm -hmm. big because fundamentally, this gets a little bit lofty here to talk about, but as human beings, there's not that many goals that we as a species have. We don't, you know, we want to protect ourselves and the people that we love. We like to have a bit of freedom and novelty in our lives. We like to have some control and some options. We like opportunity. There's some really basic things. And if you ask people why enough and sit there with your mouth closed, you tend to come back to one of those fundamental uh -huh. reasons that you both agree on your tactics so for getting it are different, but you agree. But I love that. Cause then you, you know, when we like our, our actionable tips around here and that's a great one, right? Like that translates to find your common ground, mm -hmm. reconnect. Is it your, your coworker and you both are committed to doing a, a good job on a project. Here's coming up from different angles. Okay. If you can reconnect and find that common ground, then you can collaborate or compromise. And it, it's not this battle where there's a winner and a loser. And in, in fact, you guys, sometimes the compromise isn't like a lesser for both people. It's actually more of a multiplication, like a synergy kind of thing of it's even better than either one of you wanted. So I love that point. I think, mm -hmm. um, one of the other ones besides asking questions is to, before you jump in with your rebuttal or your response or your argument against is to check your understanding. It sounds like you feel frustrated because yada, yada, yada. Am mm -hmm. I understanding that correctly? Cool. Mm -hmm. It's because if you check your understanding, that does a couple of things. One, it conveys to the other person that you're actually listening that's going to shift the, the process of what's happening, the dynamic of what's happening. And you're checking your own committee. You're not making assumptions about mm. where they're coming from because that I see happen all the time when I am kind of the third party and watching people trying to communicate, I can see where this miscommunication is happening. Cause there's in any, any communication, there's, there's three points. There's what person a thinks they're saying what they actually say and what person B hears. So there's three points where things can get kind of twisted. And so I'm a big fan of check, check your understanding. Oh, we are adorable little animals. Sometimes we have <laughs> these conversations on the podcast and I just have to smile because, uh, we are just adorable and almost set up <laughs> to fail at times. <laughs> like here, let's put these people in these relationships that mean a lot to them and depend on each other, but let's make them highly emotional and yeah. make them assume things and make them unable to communicate with each other. Ready, go. I mean, it's just rugged. Um, I yeah. want to give an example of this common coming back to common ground. And this is a personal example, but I don't mind sharing it. At the beginning of our relationship, this is before we got married, we were engaged and marching up toward uh, actually getting married. We had a series of arguments around what to do with my last name and what's wrapped up in a big ball of garbage with that is our eventual kids who were in the future and did not exist yet, but... Um, I did not want to change my last name. And I also wanted to feel connected to my kids through my name. And this, the superficial argument that we could have had, and that in the beginning it did start as, we were not good at this then. This took a really long time. 
I love but that the point argument, of it's a skill. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Oh, God, Sorry. Terrible at it's it. Such a good beginning. skill. We had the superficial version of this argument for weeks. It was, should I change my name or not? And I would say, but I don't want to. And he's like, I'm, I'm not telling you, you have to, I don't actually care what you do with my, with your name. And I'm like, but then what do we do with the kids? Cause I want to feel connected to them. And he's like, well, I don't know. But ultimately after weeks of having this argument, we got to the point where we understood the common bottom line. We wanted our family to feel like a unit. Both of us did. We wanted mm -hmm. to feel like a unit. We also both shared the value of independence and wanting to be our own people. And so from there, it turned the argument into, okay, I'm no longer trying to argue with you and you're not trying to argue with me. We are trying to come up with as many solutions as possible that fit those two criteria. What ultimately happened is I kept my last name. The kids got his last name as their last name. And both kids have my last name as their middle name. I know one other person that I found out afterward whose parents did this with her. She's an adult person who this is her context. I didn't know anyone else who had that situation, but mm -hmm. we came to that. What feels like it was creative for us because man, it took a long time. <laughs> um, what we got to that resolution only when we realized okay, what are we trying to achieve here? Like what are, what are our shared goals and outcomes mm -hmm. from this? And now that we have those, who cares? Like there's a bunch of solutions that don't fit. Let's stop talking about those because we're just not going to do those. Let's work together and find a solution that does. And it turned an argument into a brainstorming activity, which felt a heck of a lot more productive. I'm going to make one more point though. You know, what's cool about that? Jeremy now knows how much I value my independence because I thought, mm -hmm. quote unquote, I was willing to stay in the argument and bring it up over and over until it was resolved mm -hmm. in order to keep that value. That independence is a big deal. Guess mm -hmm. when that comes up now? Oh, April wants to go run. April needs some time away and some alone time. April wants to do this thing for herself. I know she values independence. These other areas that are unrelated to what is my kid's last name and what is mine. He mm -hmm. understands it now. And that's because we fought quote unquote. Well, but, but what I like though, is you got out of the superficial winner loser, right? Winner loser by, by finding that common ground one by digging deep into it. So you didn't just fight, you didn't flee from it. Right. Which is what typically happens is people get angry and we fight in an unhealthy way, or we shut down and avoid, 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 avoid. Right. Yeah. So you didn't do either one of those. You took the third path, which was like, Hey, let's actually, let's have a good fight here. But you found that common ground, which what that does is it takes you instead of standing across from each other with like, I don't know, weapons pointed at each other is it brings you to the same side, looking at a problem together. So it joins you against this external problem or situation or whatever. And then, like you said, it became more of a problem solving or a brainstorming, which actually becomes a strengthening experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than a damaging one. That's so cool. That's and so there's, cool. There's one other psychological thing here at play as well. And you, you know, you can see this once we say this, you're going to see it in a lot of different places. And I'm sure you've already experienced it and can conjure up in your mind times when this has been the case. Uh, as a people, we don't enjoy admitting that we're wrong. We really don't like it. We don't love having to eat crow and admit that we yes. were wrong. And in an argument, you know, we mentioned this listening to understand, not to respond, arguing to understand, not to win. If your primary goal is to understand you, person in your own head, don't worry about the other person right now, but just think about yourself you are less likely to feel like you need to defend your position mm -hmm. if you haven't stated it yet, you haven't said it yet. In the beginning of the argument, what you're doing is asking questions, clarifying, understanding, digging deeper. Why, why, why? You know, what's the reasoning behind that? You're not stating your point yet. 
So you're less likely to feel like you need to defend that point and dig in Mm -hmm. when you haven't made a point yet, because you may very well soften your point a little bit. You may not completely abdicate you know, your own judgment, but you may soften a bit and it's a lot easier to soften before you've made that point really strongly than it is to back the truck up and have to go back on something you've already said, especially if it's said in a really emotional way. Right. Cause then you get locked into winning or losing rather than figuring out a real solution. And then, you know, I think about there are other times, like, I guess as we're talking about this, I'm kind of thinking about different times when you would argue, right? Someone does something you don't like. Okay. Um, like maybe I need help with the dishes. I can just ask for that too. Mm -hmm. Right. Then it doesn't even have to be an argument. I, I kind of think about fighting fairly, right? A lot of times when we get mad and that anger takes over the driver's seat, that's where name calling comes in. Mm-hmm. That's not fair. That's not effective. Um, we're kind of getting distracted then by emotion. But I think about other times when, you know, there, there are arguments that need to be have, and sometimes there's not a compromise, right? Like if you are having children or not having children, there's no way to kind of compromise on a, just yeah. have a part-time kid or half a kid or something, right? So sometimes there, there will be a quote unquote winner or loser, but that's where I love this, like come back to the common ground and really seek that understanding. And maybe there are times when you're arguing and what you're really trying to do is change someone's mind. Mm -hmm. You're, you're trying to get them to see something differently or ultimately, I I think we do that most of the time to get people to change their behavior. Um, And so if we kind of move into just more, more on like how to be effective, I, I want to throw out this point that in order to change someone's mind, you have to understand, you have to understand their perspective. And this is something that I see people missing all the time. And that is understanding precedes persuasion. You're not going to be able to change someone's mind if you don't fully understand it. Again, I, I go immediately back to politics. We just came off a heated political season and how many screaming into the void situations were there. That's not effective in changing someone's mind coming out. I mean, when was the last time April someone walked up to you and was like, you're an idiot, you're wrong. And you said, oh, you're right. Thanks. Cool. Mm -hmm. I see it. No. So if you really want to be effective, it's important. And you're trying to persuade someone to change something, understand their perspective inside and out. Mm -hmm. Then you try to change. Yeah. Because a lot of times, again, you'll boil down to those very common humanity goals, needs, concerns, Uh fears, whatever. And I, another point that we haven't made is some of these quote unquote arguments are a series of conversations where you're making small movement in Mm -hmm. one direction or the other. So again, if it is a persuasion conversation, that first one might just be a conversation so that you can fully understand that person's point of view. And Mm -hmm. again, this takes emotional intelligence, self-awareness regulation, because you're probably going to hear some things in that initial conversation that are really infuriating if that person has a very opposite view than you do. But if your goal in that first conversation is just to understand, know that you're coming away with something beneficial, even if you haven't persuaded that person Mm -hmm. yet, you're coming away with the ability to understand the deeper reason why they may believe or behave Mm -hmm. or whatever it is the way that they do. And that's as to your point, Ashley, a critical first step. Yeah. Can I throw out one other point here on the understanding is that understanding is not the same as agreeing. Oh, and I see people mix that up all the time. Right. Where, uh, man, it it makes me think of teenagers in particular, but I know as adults, we do it as well. We, we conflate these two. You don't understand me. And I will see, nope, actually your parents have a really good understanding of your point, your perspective. They disagree and are unwilling to change their mind. And that happens. And I think this kind of gets to sometimes resolutions aren't going to be that someone changes. It's Mm -hmm. just understanding that you are two separate people with two separate belief systems. And while you may share a lot of values, you may share a lot of 
mutual goals and your lives may be intricately intertwined, it doesn't mean that you're going to agree on everything. And so sometimes a really, I think a winning resolution is I understand your perspective and you understand mine and we're agreeing to disagree on this. And the word that everybody hates that I'm going to bring up. And I feel like we are due for another episode on this because we've (laughs) talked about it a lot, but is acceptance. Again, not agreeing with that other person, but acknowledging acknowledging that you understand their perspective. Mm -hmm. You get it. You can articulate it back and they're like, yep, that's pretty much it. And you accept it for what it is, knowing Mm -hmm. that at least right now, it's not something that you have any control over. Yeah. And it may never change. And it makes me mm-hmm. think of like this whole like right, wrong and and thing. Have you ever seen that like comic where it, it's, there's like an M or a W on the ground and from one person, yeah. there's two people standing looking down at it. And from one, it's like, it's an M. And the other one standing directly across, it's a W. The point being, you're both correct, but it's different. And that's, I think, is really important to keep in mind. And then we're kind of circling back to the beginning of, you know, it's not about right or wrong, winning or losing, right? It's about being happy. And in this case, it's acknowledging that sometimes you're both right mm-hmm. and it's different. And, and we're going to be the same. Something that you said in previous episodes that's worth saying here too is when we say, to some extent, when we say, quote unquote, right, We're not Mm -hmm. talking necessarily about objective capital T truth. Mm -hmm. In this case, I can think of a lot of topics that I would point to and I would say there is a moral and an immoral side or there is a right and a wrong. And there are people who fall on what I would personally point to as the right side and other people that would fall on what I point to and would personally believe as the wrong side. Something that I want to throw out there that we forget, I forget all the time, is that a person's mind, their beliefs, their lens on the world is shaped by the experiences they've had, the things they've observed, what they've been taught explicitly and implicitly in their life. And this is one of those times when we aren't talking about capital T truth, objective reality, or what you know, a philosophical book would say is moral Mm -hmm. or immoral. We're talking about from that person's experience, this is correct. Mm -hmm. And changing a concept of what's correct or right or normal Mm -hmm. or whatever isn't going to happen overnight when it comes from something, comes from a place where that person has been taught in this variety of ways that this is the right way to believe, behave, feel, Mm -hmm. act, whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where acceptance comes in and understanding can help. I I mentioned this on a previous episode one time about building empathy, even toward people who you loathe. Like if you get in your mind, the person that you can, and now we're moving out of the context of these relationships where you can assume positive intent. Maybe it's, Mm -hmm. you know, different relationships, but If you think of a person who you absolutely loathe and cannot stand, think about the reasons why and what they've done and just what you can't stand about them. And then I want you to picture them as a baby, like a little baby, weeks old. Like what do little babies look like? What sounds do they make? They whack themselves in the face and they're like shocked at where their arm came from because they don't even know it's their arm. They don't have (laughs) any idea what's going on. And they're so innocent. And when you look at, like, could you point at a baby that is two weeks old and point at any baby, hundreds of them, and say, I hate you. I have good reason to hate you. You can't because there's there's nothing there. But if you think about what happened between two weeks old and where that person is now, you may still loathe them, but man, it can break your heart when you think about what led that person to be in a position like that. Mm -hmm. And no, you don't agree with them. No, you're not going to maybe want to do good things for them or whatever. But man, does that help build acceptance because you're like, yeah, understand. that's Mm -hmm. a big old load. 
and I don't know what to do mm-hmm. about it, but I see it and I don't like mm-hmm. you and I disagree, mm-hmm. but yep, I see it now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. As we're talking about this, you know, everything in the, in the context of, you know, relationships and having winning arguments and what that actually means and how to do that. And then, you know, I just, in amazed and, and validated, everything comes back to psychological strength, right? Like knowing how to navigate your emotions, being in charge of your mind instead of the other way around, having the skills and the willingness to wade into uncomfortable territory and being able to enact your values. And it just, I mean, all of these things, like when we start out with, Hey, we're talking about arguments today. Underneath that is the importance of psychological strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It manifests itself Mm -hmm. in literally every aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. That's why like, you know, we, I get up at five in the morning and work on this stuff while you're up late (laughs) working on this stuff while we talk about this and text each other and email each other all the time working on this stuff because it's important. It really is. So I hope this conversation has been helpful in helping you think about some of those more difficult conversations that we inevitably will have to have with people who are important to us in our lives and ways that you can move through them and come to a good resolution and quote unquote, win every argument because you're going to get to a place where either you understand, maybe you have persuaded or minimally you've reached acceptance where you can put your mind to rest. You're not walking away rattling around on the topic Mm -hmm. anymore. You've gotten to a point of resolution or satiation with the topic that you've learned something about the other person that may translate into other areas of life. No matter what you decide to do for the upcoming Valentine's Day holiday, love yourself, man. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Invest in yourself. Uh, Take this time to think about the relationships that are important in your life and invest in those in ways that really foster them. Lord knows that in this time that we've all been going through for the last year, we need that more than ever. So uh, be intentional about uh, these next steps and, you know, either celebrate or ignore said holiday based on how you feel. But thank you so much for joining us for this episode. We really hope this was helpful and effective for you. And we will see you next week for another awesome episode. It's a simple fact that nearly everyone in the world could benefit from building psychological strength, but not everyone will put in the time and effort to do so. But today you did. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of building psychological strength. Now, if you're interested in building the mental toughness, confidence, and resilience you need to thrive through life's ups and downs, visit us at www.peakmindpsychology.com. Also, if there's someone in your life who could benefit from this episode, please share it with them. And if you yourself found this episode valuable, meaning if you took away even one insight that you can use to build psychological strength in your own life, we would so appreciate it if you would drop us a rating and a review on iTunes. The thing is, the more ratings and reviews we have, the easier it is to get this powerful and important content out to the people who need to hear it. Remember, your mind can be your most valuable asset or your biggest liability, and you get to choose. So choose wisely, my friend, and I'll see you next time on Building Psychological Strength.